Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, Karen stole my TV while I was moving in, claiming it was public property out on the street. For a moment, I really thought I was going to get through my life without having to directly deal with a Karen neighbor, but since I have now, I might as well share it with the world. Now, what I did not know at the time was this Karen actually only lived a block away from me, but since I was moving in, I had no way to know that. I was helping unload the moving van and while we were deciding where some things exactly would go, we used the front yard as a waiting area. The way the van was packed, some of the stuff that needed to go inside first ended up more towards the back. Because of this structure, boxes needed to be taken out and put down for a little while. We did not mind though and the only thing that really matters is that along with the boxes our TV was sitting out on the lawn. So I came outside to grab a box and I saw this woman loading the TV into the back of her SUV. I ran before she could get into the driver's seat and speed away. I did not want to get robbed before I even moved into my new house and needing to buy another TV was not something I needed on my new home checklist. Me? What are you doing? That's my TV. Karen, no it isn't. Unless it is inside your house, it is public property. Me? It was outside because we are just moving in. Half of the boxes are still sitting outside by the curb too. Karen, I found it on the public street and that makes it mine. Me? No it doesn't. Taking it is literal theft. It is a crime taking something that doesn't belong to you. Again, it is sitting out here because I am moving things into my new home. That doesn't mean it is legal for you to just show up and start taking things that you want. They still belong to me. Karen, I don't know what backwards laws you have from wherever country you are from, but here, if things are out on the street, they are up for grabs. Now that last comment I need to mention that I was born in the country, but because of the color of my skin she assumed that I was a foreigner. Between the stealing and the blatant racism, I knew right away that I was dealing with a Karen and I was not going to win an argument with her out in the street. So instead as she drove away, I took a picture of her license plate so I could call the police and report the theft later on. In that moment though, I really needed to finish getting everything in the house because the clouds forming told me that it was going to rain and I did not want to get all my stuff wet. I just did not know at the time the rain was both literal and metaphorical when it came to dealing with Karen. Calling the police and giving them the plate was enough for them to at least start an investigation into things. That was when I learned Karen lived only a block away from me and that she actually had plenty of money. I guess she was just stealing for fun because not only is the neighborhood fairly affluent, this woman has two luxury cars, a pool in the backyard and fancy jewelry. Basically, there was no way you could convince me that this woman did not have a TV or needed to steal it to pawn it for like food money. It was just some cheap thrill for her and that actually got me even angrier about the situation. I wanted to march right over there myself and give her a piece of my mind, but restrained myself, meaning my wife kept me calm until the police could do their thing and pay a visit to Karen. Of course, she told the cops that she did not know what they were talking about and that she never took it. They could not get probable cause to search her house for it, so they told me that unless I had anything better than my testimony, they really could not do anything. Again, my wife had to stop me from just going there myself and yelling at her about stealing the TV. We were at an impasse where I thought I did not have any proof. But I was actually wrong. See, the moving company we use needs to use cameras on all of their vans to prevent people suing them wrongfully for things breaking. After talking with them, they agreed to let me see the footage they had which you can see Karen pulling up and stealing it. That was enough for the police to get a search warrant and found my TV somewhere in her house. I did not want to press charges for theft or anything, I just wanted to finally be able to finish setting up my cable and have one last thing to do. 
Now, you might think naturally the story would end here, Karen got caught, I got my TV back, etc. Well, that might have been the end of the story, but a few weeks later, a wonderful opportunity for revenge came knocking and I cannot finish this story without including it. Another neighbor was throwing a little block party, that including a few blocks so both me and Karen were on the invite list. I do want to mention that besides Karen, everyone else was very nice and welcoming me to the neighborhood, so she seemed to be the anomaly. Neighbor's backyard had a pool, so many of us at the party were taking advantage of it on the hot day and were swimming. Karen looked a little weird because instead of pool party attire, she was dressed up a little too fancy. She had a diamond necklace and seemed to have her nose permanently stuck in the air. I don't know if she didn't see me or was actively ignoring me, but thankfully we did not speak. She did go swimming though and after having a few free drinks and seeming to eat her fill of whatever free food she could find, she wandered off back home. I guess when she cannot steal, she is too busy taking advantage of other people's good nature. When I was swimming though, I noticed something sparkling at the bottom of the pool. I went down to grab it and I realized that it was Karen's diamond necklace. Now, I'll admit, the adult thing to do would be to give it back to her, even though she would probably accuse me of somehow stealing it right off of her neck. The more vengeful would tell me to keep it or sell it at a pawn shop to get some nice money. I did not choose either of those though and instead I put it into an empty chips bag I was eating along with some napkins and threw it right in the trash can. If she wanted to treat me like trash, then I was going to take that literally and turn her lost stuff into trash. Besides, according to her own logic, since it was in the bottom of the pool and not in the house, it was magically public property. And yeah, ripe stars, if you have watched until here and still enjoy the stories about crazy entitled neighbors, then please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance and I now have to take care of a needy cat. The next one is titled Karen Catnapped My Cat. I live on a private residence on a private drive. It is a small neighborhood and everyone mostly minds their business given it is more in the countryside. But there is this one neighbor, we will call her Karen neighbor KN. She has recently purchased a home where a sweet old man used to be before he passed. She had wasted no time at all harassing the children who dare ride their bikes near her property and generally is making enemies in the neighborhood. She had not gotten a chance to interact with me beside the normal neighbor greet. She then texts on our neighborhood talk app, Hey everyone, I found this cute cat almost dead. It looked as if it was starving and I took it in and fed it. However, it was my cat. Some context, my cat is gray and white and prefers the outside. If he is not outside for a bit of the day, he retaliates, so I decided with the spacious yard I have and low level of danger, I would feed him in the morning, let him out, wait until he comes back and feed him, let him in and then he and I both sleep. This has worked for years and he seems much happier for it. He usually returns at a certain time, so I wait near the door at this time to bring him inside. The previous night though he did not return, I got worried so I called our farmer, who is the nicest and most helpful person on our road, like if you need anything, you go to him and told him about the missing cat. He said he would keep an eye out and spread the word tomorrow. Tomorrow came and I am on the neighborhood talk app and see my cat. I was elated until I actually read. I take my cat to the vet consistently and he is in perfect health. There was no way he is almost dead or starving. I was willing to put all this aside however as I just wanted my cat back. I call her, this was the conversation. Me, hey Karen neighbor, I was looking at the neighborhood talk app and you found my cat. When can I swing around to pick it up? Karen neighbor, why would you leave your cat outside? Do you even care about it? Me, taken aback by the audacity, I do care about it. It goes outside on vet recommendation. It really likes the outdoors and comes back inside every night. Karen neighbor, oh really, which vet told you that? Me, my vet's name, he said some cats just cannot stay inside. Karen neighbor, yeah right, you probably made that up and just leave it outside because you don't love it enough to take care of it. 
me very close to losing it trying to push conversation forward. Okay, so are you home right now? Because I can swing, yeah I'm home, come and get the cat. Karen neighbor just hangs up the phone. I was fuming. Why the hell would anyone say stuff like that unprovoked, especially when they don't know what they are talking about? No matter, I grab my keys and drive down to Karen neighbor's house. I knock on the door. Me, hey, I'm here to get the cat. Karen neighbor, oh never mind, it makes sense now, you're one of those gay types. I am biromantics asexual, I look the part too, I am proud of it so I show it off, but that was the last straw. Me quite fed up, alright, just give me my damn cat Karen. Karen neighbor, how dare you talk to me like that, I'm calling animal control, you're obviously unfit to take care of a pet. Me, I'm sorry what, I cannot speak Karen, just give me my cat and I will leave, it is simple. Karen shuts the door and calls animal control. I decide to call the farmer, obviously I need backup and I'm not wasting emergency resources for a petty squabble. The farmer says he's on his way, he arrives shortly after. I bring him up to speed and he knocks on the door. Karen neighbor answers. Farmer, ma'am, could you please return this man his cat? Karen neighbor, no, he assaulted me because I said he couldn't take care of this poor dying cat. Farmer, Listen, I know that's a bunch of baloney. OP would not hit anyone, not just because he's one of the nicest people I know, but because he's weak. He laughs, so do I. Can I please have the cat? Karen, the only people I will give this cat to is animal control. She then slams the door. She was making this extremely hard for all parties involved. There was one option left. Wait for animal control and explain what was happening. So we did. About 20 minutes later they arrive. We explain to the man what was happening. Jesus Christ, I will get the cat, he said. He knocks on the door. KN answers, but instead of her demon form, she has turned into the nicest woman in the world. Karen neighbor, hello, are you here for the cat? AC, I am here to return the cat to its owner. Please hand me the cat. Karen neighbor, but he obviously cannot take care of the cat. He is a maniac. You should take it to the shelter. AC, listen, the owner has proof they obviously care about the animal, so that cat will remain in his care. Please return the cat or I will have to get the authorities involved. Karen stutters for a bit, sighs and hands over the cat. Karen, this is a huge mistake. She then shuts the door, AC returns my cat to me. I thank both the farmer and animal control and leave in my car. I'm just happy it is over and I don't have to deal with that entitlement again. She has not grabbed it again yet, but when she does, I am calling the authorities. I'm not dealing with her ever again. My cat is very happy. There were no signs of damage or disease when I went to the vet after the incident. And so far, this story ends on a happily ever after note. And here, Ripe stars, the author also thankfully paid the cat tax. And another picture of the cat that got catnapped. Anyway, but yeah, thanks for all the advice and well wishes. I have decided to get him chipped instead of a GPS in the collar and I filed an incident report this morning as per some common suggestions. The catio is almost finished as I type this and he has been inside until it is finished. To those saying, don't leave your cat outside, it will kill him, I understand where you are coming from and I promise he's usually very good about his boundaries in the fence. This is the second time this has happened and I did not catch it immediately. I understand the fear but in the end only I truly know what I've been told and I am going with the vet rather than some reddit comments on indoor versus outdoor. And yeah, Ripe stars, I'm curious, if you have any cats of your own, do you only leave them inside or do you also let them roam outside? Please let us know what you think about this in the comments. The next one is titled Tire Revenge. I sold a car today, it was not in great condition, mostly issues with the chassis as well as a ding to one of the windscreen columns. Brake pads were starting to fail and suspension was shaky. Still, electrics and engine worked perfectly and body was structurally sound despite a ding or two. Before hearing the news about the undercarriage, we had purchased a new windscreen and four new tires. It needed about $1,600 in repairs and would end up being worth $2,600. I rang around a few chop shops and got a few quotes. Looking for $800, I figured $200 for their overhead and profit was fair for not having to deal with it myself. 
The closest I got was $700, fair enough, it is not what I want but I can live with it. I booked a time for the car to be picked up, moved it to the side of the road and cleaned it out. The day of the pickup I received a call confirming the truck arrival time, all the usual stuff and then the question of price came up. Oh, the guy who quoted you that isn't good with cars, he didn't know what you meant when you mentioned the bushes. Oh, you did not say it has 120,000 kilometers on the clock. The engine is probably going to last another 50,000 at most. Oh, another guy brought the same model into us and was happy to receive 450. Will you take 500? No, I won't. And I won't take 550 or 600 either. We ended the call there and I was ready to put the car back in the garage, save the money and do it myself. He called back 10 minutes later. Sure, I can do 650. At this point he sent the truck and I had about an hour. I knew he was trying to make an extra buck and I knew I was being taken advantage of. But I also knew that we had two other cars and all three took the same size of tire. In the hour I had before the truck arrived I removed three of the new tires we had just put onto the car and swapped them out for the space savers. The truck arrived, quickly inspected the car, handed over $650 cash and left. Now I have $50 less than I expected and spare tires worth $210. He cannot complain, he never asked about the tires. Someone just woke up while I was recording. <laughs> just woke up from nap. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, no. <laughs> this day getting bigger and bigger. Oh, like a motorcycle. Now she already knows where to get back into our room when she's hungry. She just goes back by herself. And the car's to scratch. <laughs> so yeah, some of you said that we should buy a laser pointer, but we already have that. We actually have a lot of toys. When my mom first saw this, she thought we are gonna have a baby or something like that. <laughs> so many toys everywhere. But obviously a baby that would need this would be a little weird. So yeah, we just got a cat baby, not a human baby, and I'm pretty happy with that to be honest. <laughs> And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore, if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube, then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.